In the new 9 to 1 GCSEs, tiering applies only in maths, the sciences, and the modern foreign languages. And really importantly, the tiers have actually shifted so that they cover a slightly different grade range to the tiers on the legacy qualifications. So the new foundation tier goes all the way up to a 5 or a 5-5 five five on combined science, where previously it only went up to a C. Similarly, the new higher tier only goes down to a grade 4 or 4-4 four four on combined science, where previously it went down to a D. So it's important to be aware that those tiers have shifted and that should of course influence the entry decisions that you make for your students. The tiers are equated at grades 4 and 5 to ensure that those standards are comparable across the two tiers. And in order to do that, we use common questions. So at least 20% of the available marks on each tiered paper are common to both tiers. And that allows us to use student performance on those common questions to make sure that the standards at grade 4 and 5 are equated across foundation and higher tier. Although the higher tier goes down to a grade 4, there's also an allowed grade 3 or 4-3 on combined science that sits below that. Now that's there very much as a safety net, just to catch those few students who were rightly entered for the higher tier, but ended up underperforming on the day. Now that allowed grade 3 is intended to be half the width of a standard grade. Now in 2018, in maths, this half width allowed grade 3 was retained, as very few students fell off the bottom of the higher tier without a grade, no more than did last year, a small number. And of course, as it was the second year of that specification, teachers should have been familiar with where the standards sat for the different tiers. However, in science and languages, in their first year of the 9 to 1 GCSEs this year, quite a large number of students underperformed on the higher tier and would have been at risk of falling off the bottom and not securing a grade. Now because of that, Ofqual chose for this year only to widen the allowed grade 3 or 4-3 on combined science to be a full width grade and in addition to add a further allowed grade 3-3 three, three on the bottom of the combined science higher tier. Now what that meant was that the vast majority of students who sat the higher tier did receive a grade and were rewarded for their performance. But in truth, most of those students were performing at foundation tier level and should have been entered for that tier. Now, our expectation is that these exceptional arrangements won't be carried forward to next year. So if on sciences and languages, you had large numbers of students on the higher tier achieving a grade three, or a grade 4-3 three or 3-3, three, three, then I'd really encourage you to look in detail at those entries and think about which tier you're entering those students for. It's likely that some of those students should have been entered for the foundation tier, and next year, were they to be entered for the higher tier again, they would be at risk of falling off the bottom of that higher tier and not securing a grade. So how can you decide which tier to enter your students for? Well, unfortunately, there's no magic bullet to help make that decision. You as teachers know your students best and you're best placed to judge which tier is best suited to which candidate. But there are a few pointers to think about. Now, the first thing is, do think about where those tiers now sit across the grade, the grade range. So remember that foundation tier does now go up to grade five. So there's a higher grade available than on the old grade C. Similarly, remember that higher tier now starts at grade four. Now that's a much higher demand than on the legacy qualifications. And even the half width allowed grade three is at a higher demand than the old grade D. So do think about that carefully when thinking about which tier to enter your students for. It may be, if you prefer thinking in old money, that the old grade B, grade C boundary is now a better guide to which tier to enter students for than the old CD boundary that you might have used previously. It's important to bear in mind that borderline grade four or five candidates are likely to have a challenging experience of higher tier as only a relatively small number of the questions on that paper will be targeted at grade four. So do think carefully about whether that student is likely to achieve a grade five or above before deciding to enter them for higher tier. 
Now, one of the best ways to guide your decision about which tier to enter students for is to look at their performance on the common questions. So look at the sample papers and the past papers that we've published and have a look at how they perform on those common questions that appear on both foundation and higher tier papers. At least 20% of the questions on those tiered qualifications in maths, science and languages are common to both tiers. Now, if students can't answer many of those, then they're unlikely to have a good experience of the higher tier. If, on the other hand, they sit those common questions and do reasonably well, then you can probably be confident that they'll perform reasonably well on higher tier and won't be at too much risk of falling off the bottom and not securing a grade. The other thing I'd suggest is, as we now have three different subjects with hired papers, if it's worked well for your colleagues in one particular department, in maths or science or languages, have a chat to them and understand the strategies that they used to make decisions around which tier to enter their students for. The final thing that's really worth knowing is that you can change your tier of entry for free up until the 21st of April. So even when you've made your exam entries earlier in the year, if you then have further mocks or further data available to help inform your decision and decide you want to change which tier you've entered a student for, your exams officer can do that up until the 21st of April with no charge. You can still change it after that date, but there is a charge at that point.